Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. How are you today? Okay, you wait for this every single month. So can you guess what today's show is about? In case you missed the header. Yeah, our dear friend Joanne Banco is coming on to talk about the free design of the month. And wait till you see the super cute project she has. I'm hoping it's as fast as it is cute. Because I'm going on a fishing trip. And I really need this as an additive to the boat. <laughs> so welcome, everyone. Say hi. Say where you're from. And let's welcome Brother Brand Ambassador. Did I say that fast enough? Say that like 10 times fast. <laughs> Brother Brand Ambassador, Joanne Banco. Hey, Joanne. How are hey, you? Hey, Angela. Hi, everybody. That would be tricky. That would be tricky. <laughs> I know. You don't realize it until you go to say it. And it's like it just doesn't roll. Like yeah. as good as it <laughs> it's so, so good to see everybody here today. Hello, 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 all of our brother friends. Wow, lots of yeah, people here. That's this is their, one of their favorite times of the month because you remind them number one, don't forget to download the free design of the month. But you're also showing them ways to use it with cute projects, and this is going to be really fun. Yeah, you know these designs are always the they're always keepers in my book. Like you want to. You want to download them. You want to keep them. You want to store them in a, I have a regular folder that I, you know, that I keep and um, use them over and over again, because you can, you can make all kinds of things with these designs. The whole idea with the project is to give you something immediate to do with it. And that coordinates well with it, but then use your imagination to make whatever else you want. Exactly. So I'm going to, I'm going to give them a little teaser. Yeah. Well, we teased That's a little there <laughs> we teased last month for those of you that were here and hopefully you watch every month because again you know this is just um something we love to do and uh brother loves to give you free designs so why not take them right <laughs> absolutely absolutely but All right. i had said that it was something that everybody could use and what i meant by that is we are all told over and over and over and over and over again to drink our water take our water with us you know, if you're leaving the house and I know, I don't know about you, Angela, but if I forget and I leave the house without something to drink, I'm already getting a little panicky because if I'm out for very long, I'm going to need something to drink. So um, this is just you on that. A, a beautiful way to carry your water bottle. Uh, this is something I've wanted to make for a really long time. And I will, I'll tell you, I, I did a little research and there are patterns out there. Some of them are pretty detailed like they'll have like you know extra pouches on there and zippers and all kinds of things and i mean that's fine if you want to do one like that but you said you wanted something pretty quick aside from the embroidery which takes a you know we, we know our embroidery takes a little bit of time but aside from that this is super easy to put together and really just a great project for for anybody you can make it in all kinds of different fabrics um Make it out of children's fabrics for, you know, for the kids. Make it out of, you know, some uh, camouflage if you want for <laughs> for some of the, uh, the you know, guys that you know that might like that kind of look. Um, anything, anything goes. You just need cotton fabric and a little bit of, um, a little bit of fleece. And, you know, if you want to embroider on it, great. But you can also make this plain if you want to. It's a great carryall. I like the, is that the free design this month? That super yes. cute star or whatever that is? Yeah, it's, you know what it's, I I call this uh, a Southern, uh, not Southern, a uh, uh, Southwestern style sunshine. Okay. Yeah, that three like times it. real quick. Because <laughs> that's what it kind of reminds me of, that kind of, uh, you know, that Southwest look. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, yeah, it's kind of like a little, little sunburst in the middle. It's just a bright and colorful perfect summertime design. Yeah, that is so cute, bright. And I think you got me in the habit of carrying water everywhere because we talked about this. And you're right. If I get in the car in the morning and I don't have my water, I go back in to get it. But this is going to make it easy because I can just keep it and throw it on my back on my way out, out the door to the gym, Super to nice. work, wherever. Yeah. And like I said, it's just cotton, just um, quilting, you know, quilting type cotton. Now, the only other thing I, I used with it is some uh, fusible fleece. And when I say fusible fleece, I always mean the, the craft type. So the type you would use for, you know, placemats and things like that. It's a little bit on the, on the thinner side. It's about maybe about an eighth of an inch and it fuses really well. But I had a thought afterwards, if you really wanted to, 
You could even use the, the insulated fleece. So if you, if you were carrying something, you know, cold and you wanted it to stay cold, that would help that a little bit. So that's another, another consideration. We always come up with more ideas after the fact, right? <laughs> Yeah, while you're at it, uh, my ice maker just broke last night. Could you add that into this as well? <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Well, you can fill your bottle with ice, that's for sure. Okay. Keep your ice for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> but nice oh, long handle. Um, I just use the the width of the fabric to make the strap. So it kind of, oh. it's perfect. Uh, I didn't mean to match myself today, but I match pretty good with the top I have on. But you could do it, you know, crossbody style or just sling it over your shoulder, or you could take it and just do a little, you know, tie a little knot. And if you just want to grab it, maybe put it in your, in your workout bag or your uh, beach bag, um, whatever, you know, you could shorten up that strap a little bit. So. Super, super cute. What does the bottom look, Joanna? Uh, Patty said that bottom looks really interesting. Oh, it yeah. Is really so let me talk about that just a little bit. So like I said, I, I did some research on these just to see what they look like. I, I always wanted to make one and I just, you know, I knew, I knew I needed to make some type of a cylinder. And if you've ever sewn something circular with a, with a circular piece at the bottom attached to a piece that is not circular at the top, um, I've done a few projects like that and it can be really, really tricky. So I thought, you know, we don't want to go with tricky. We want to go with, with super simple and easy, especially for summertime sewing. So I just came up with this idea of, you know, what do I need now? I just need something there to hold the bottle to keep it from dropping out. And I was making the straps and I thought, what if I made strips like the straps and just, you know, kind of crisscrossed them almost like a basket weave and, you know, there you go. That's how I came up with that idea. So it, it worked. <laughs> That is really, really, really cute. Really cute. And I would love to see in the comments, how many of you ever tried sewing a circle about this big into a hole this big? <laughs> it's not yeah. fun. It's not fun. All. No. And, I, and like I said, I try, you know, as much, I, the whole idea with these projects is not only for you to, you know, make use of the free design, you know, that the brother is, is giving you, make use of the nice features in your brother machine. Um, maybe some extra feet that are involved and, and different things like that, accessories. But it's uh, it's also just for you to um, to enjoy the enjoy the process. So I I try oh, not to make them. any of these you know too too technically difficult. So <laughs> we Joanne, everybody is just saying how excited they are for this, and I they love the idea of insulated fleece. Yeah, I didn't like I said I didn't think about that until until later, but. You have enough um, enough ease around. If you look at the you know the bottle, it, it moves freely. Although mm -hmm. you are making um, a custom pattern, so we'll go into that in, in just a minute. But you're making the the water bottle sling to fit your bottle. Now, I went into my cupboard and I found a lot of these bottles. I have to admit, I don't know if anybody else has more than one, but I have several of these and. Uh, a couple of them were basically the almost identical size, given a little bit of difference in the height. And um, a couple of them were just a little bit smaller. So again, if you wanted to make one that's kind of a one size fits all, I think if you use my measurements, you'll be good to go. I think this would even fit your traditional um, plastic bottles that, that you oh, use. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of drinking out of plastic. I really prefer to drink out of um, either glass or, or, um, stainless steel. That's just my preference. So, well, okay. So uh, I, I just have this totally not, it's the same thing you're talking about. What different sizes do you have? Well, when and I, we did a spring cleaning, we cleaned out this whole glasses cabinet, it's supposed to be for glasses and cups. And we have a ton of those. We've won them in tournaments or I pick them up, you know, to fly with. And now I want to know, Joanne, your next project has to be how to find the matching lids to the matching glass. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, or I, I got another one for you. We'll have to do this one in the future. Um, so you gave me an idea. You always give me, you, you always, you always spur my creativity, Angela, between you and everybody else here in the comments. I get, I get so jazzed up over these. I just want to stay in here and sew all day afterwards. <laughs> but another good one would be to take, you know, your coffee cups that, mm -hmm. that you have like a million of, and you're not using and make that into a notion carrier. We'll have to do that in a future one. That'll be a good oh, one. Oh, 
Oh, I like that. I have a ton of those. That'll be my next clean out project. In the meantime, I'll find the lids and I can't wait to make one of these. All right. Okay. So let me just tell you just a, um, a couple more things about this. The um, instructions and the free design are good to go, ready for you to download. If you go to the Brother um, blog, uh, Stitching Social, you will find the project already there, ready for you to um, watch the instructions. There we go. We got brother, every brother giving us all the information we need. And then I just want to clue you into one other thing. We do have another new feature that we started this month, um, actually last month. It was published uh, last month. And that is foot of the month is back to the brother site. So every month I'm doing a feature uh, of an accessory, either with a project or a tutorial and teaching you how to use all of those fabulous brother accessories you have available to you. So make sure you check out that one as well. Yeah, Joanne, right. I'll make sure I bring that up at the end too, because I have the blog listed right here. I'm going to put it into the comments, but I see your foot of the month from June. So we'll bring that up at the end here. Great. And I'll grab the project and show that to you at the end too. But those are those are going to be really good. Um, I, I, we've got a lot of positive comments on those in the past. So speaking of positive comments, I'm going to ask everybody here. Now, we love your comments here and we love for you to um, to share, you know, your ideas and your projects and, you know, post them to Brother's uh, social sites. But please make sure you let Brother know uh, what you like here because uh, they want they want to continue what it is that's making you um, so more with your Brother machine. So. Awesome. And yes, it's back. And you know what, Joanne, today's Thursday, which because all the comments that people left, we miss brother on Thursdays. That's why we're here today. So you, those comments do matter. So make sure you like and share. And today we're live streaming on brother Facebook and YouTube channel. We can see all your comments and questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm loving the comments that are coming in here too. So yeah, please make sure you download that free design sooner rather than later, because at the end of the month, month it goes away so the projects stay up but the free design is no longer free it goes back on ibroidery um, for purchase which you can absolutely purchase but why not get it for free while you can that's the whole idea looks good joanne all right we ready to get started we are all right so i'm going to start out with a few images so if you want you can keep me in the corner whatever you want to do um, but if we wanted to sew this from start to finish, as you can well imagine, uh, it would take us um, a little bit more time than we have here. So I've prepped a few things and got started and we should be able to, to finish it up. So first um, picture here just kind of reminds you um, this particular design fits a four inch hoop. So let's hear it in the, in the let's get thumbs up in the, in the chat if you're happy about that. Um, we try to, you know, do a little bit of everything. And last month we had a big design. This month we have a four by four design. So this will work for absolutely everybody. Um, it's very colorful, like I said, and it's one of those things that you can really choose your own color scheme. So <clears throat> the first one I did, I followed, you know, a little bit close to what the original was, changed a few things. But the second one that I did, I actually, um, you, you could see uh, where it says fits four inch by four inch hoop. You can see there's a lot of different colors in those triangles. And I thought, hmm, why can't I have two that are lime green and two that are this yellow and two, instead of changing the color for each one of those. So I did streamline it a little bit. And that's just another little tip for you. When you're looking at designs that have multiple colors, have a lot of color changes, and you see how many you know minutes it's going to take, think about what you can maybe consolidate a little bit. Maybe two colors can be, you know, colors can be used um, right in a row and that'd save you from having to change the thread. Even on a multi-needle machine, it's helpful to, you know, repeat the color so that you're not having to change your, your threads as much. Cause eventually, you know, with, with some designs you have to change your threads on multi-needle as well. So that's just a little tip for you. Bring, it, bring the design into your machine or bring it into your brother's software play around with the colors. As long as you have the original one saved and the original name, you're, you can always get back to it. And as you're making changes, one of the things I like to do is I'll make, maybe I'll, you know, let's say it's called um, free design uh, July. I'll say free design July V1, V, you know, 
stands for version one. And then if I'm trying another color, I'll do V2 and just save all those different ones. You can save those right at your machine too, if you want to, so that you can play around a little bit and, and go back to another. Oh, I just thought of another idea might be fun to do. Angela, what is one of your, I'm going to put you on the spot. What is one of your favorite features that allows you to see different colors on the machine. I was just, I was like, I taped my mouth shut, not to interrupt you, but that color shuffle, I was thinking this in yes. color shuffle, I'm not yes. sure the technical for it, would be so much fun because it in would. the luminary, you can go from page to page to page to page to page and pick your favorite colors. Yeah, that's exactly, I was good though. I didn't interrupt you. I kept that's my mouth okay. Shut. I, you, you, anytime. I, 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 I was out <laughs> i was waiting to see if anybody in anybody in the chat was going to think of that so i you know that would be a, that would be a fun one to try that would be a lot a lot a lot of fun to try so there you fun. go there's there's you know <laughs> that just gives you a good overview of the the design itself so we can go to the next one and so this is where you're going to start making your your custom measurement now <laughs> Here's when it gets a little funny because I'd love to know in the chat how many of you really enjoy doing math. If you if you do, more power to you. I you know I love you, but I am not a math person. I just you know like it's just not one of my fun things to do. So um, there are times though in sewing uh, that we we have to do that. And so we want to we want to continue on with that. Um, funny true story. I wasn't very good in uh, geometry, and I told my teacher one day, um, a, as I was ready to graduate, I said, you know, I really don't need this anyway because I'm going to fashion school after I after I graduate. And she just kind of gave me kind of a funny look. Well, one of the first things we had to do in fashion school was figure out how to, you know, do the. Uh, uh, the pie thing, you know, 3.14 in order to make a perfect circle. So I felt a little bit ashamed. And uh, another true part of the story, uh, uh, a little while after that, I actually ran into her uh, while grocery shopping and I went up to her and I apologized. <laughs> I said, I, you know, I was young and a little bit brash. And I said, I, I just want you to know that number one, I'm sorry. Number two, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this math it's pretty easy. So just don't let the, don't let the whole instructions there confuse you at all. You're just basically getting the, the width and the length, and then you're adding some ease to it. And then you're figuring out um, the rest of the pieces based on, on that formula. Okay. Uh, yeah. I love, I love the ideas that are coming in here. Angela, I'm, my allergies have been off the charts this year. So I'm going to have to stop and sip tea a couple times. Give me a sec. Hey. No worries. No worries. Enjoy your tea. I'm just reading all the comments about the math. So Joanne, I have to say I'm a math freak too. I There's a few in here that are like, I'd rather someone, Patty says, I'd rather, I enjoy other people doing my math. <laughs> I know it, it's, you know, now today it's obviously it's easier. You can look up a lot of things, you know, online, but still I just, I'm, I'm, I'm math challenged. I, I'm the first one, first one to admit it. But anyway. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, if, you need, so, if you need to let me take you out, just holler and I'll, because okay. I totally get the allergy thing. <laughs> I know it's, it's been extra bad this year. I'm sure I'm not, I'm sure I'm not alone. So once we do that and the instructions tell you everything, you're going to basically measure the bottom and, and you're going to measure then around the whole um, thing. And you're going to measure the, uh, the height that you want. And again, it's loosey goosey, you know, round up, round down, whatever. There's enough ease there to fit your bottle in. And the height really, you know, as you can see, it's not all that important. I just kind of wanted to figure it so that most of these types of bottles have a have a wider base and then a skinnier neck. And I just wanted to configure it so that I could, you know, still drink out of my bottle without having to take it out of the sling if I wanted to. So that works. But, you know, the other thing you can do if you if you want, want to be really uh, persnickety in particular about this is uh, cut one out either in scrap fabric or a lot of times when I'm developing a pattern, I will use um, pattern tracing cloth and cut that out and, and give it a trial fit and see if you need to make any adjustments. Okay. All right. So once we've done that, so we'll go back to that same picture for a minute. Um, we're going to cut the custom size pieces. We're going to um, prep all our pieces for sewing. What I mean by that is we're going to fuse our fleece where it needs to go. 
And then, um, and you'll see, I cut my fleece so that it doesn't go into the seam allowance. That's just being a little bit more, again, particular with this thin fleece. It's not really an issue. So if you want to cut it full size, no biggie, not, don't worry about it. But it makes it a little bit easier to press the seams open. And it makes it a little bit easier to um, turn the top hem down when it comes to that part. Then you're going to embroider the front of the outside piece. Easy peasy. You take the, the one piece that you've determined for the front. And by the way, I did use the same fabric for the lining as I did for the outer fabric. That's just another tip for you. Now, I could, you know, if I had fabric that I didn't have much of and I wanted to economize, I could use a different fabric for the outside as I did for the inside. However, um, many of you already know this, if you've made many things, especially even in garment sewing, if you have something that matches on the inside, when it comes time to, um, you know, having the, the edges meet, it looks a lot better if you don't have something totally contrasting peeking out from the other side. So it's just kind of a trick to make things look a little bit um, neater and you're not noticing a color change. But again, that's you know, optional. Everything in sewing is optional, right, Angela? You can pick yeah, and choose whatever works for you. True. So, but that's a tip, Joanne, because if somebody, you know, especially somebody who's beginner, a beginner sewer, that they, they want to do that beautiful top stitching at the top, but they're worried their stitches might look crooked if both sides match and your thread matches, yeah. nobody's going to notice. <laughs> I call it the forgiveness factor. And wherever I can work in the forgiveness factor in my sewing process, be I'm good. going for it because it just, you know, <laughs> makes it makes makes it easier. Okay. And I see Darlene's asking, is it insulated? No, Darlene, um, you could say somewhat because it's got fleece. So just like a, a, you know, a quilt that's got, you know, batting in it kind of insulates your body when it's over you. You could say yeah. that it it's um, semi-insulated. But if you wanted to make it truly insulated, then you would use that insulated type of batting, which has... Uh, like a silver, a silver, it has a silver lining. Isn't that a nice thing? <laughs> and that um, somehow reflects heat or cold. Don't ask me the principles of it, but it, I know that it, that it works. It's kind of like a pot holder. Um, so it'll, it'll keep the cold or the hot in there. So good, really good question though. All right. So um, then the next thing we do is we actually construct the, the bottle sling. So those are the basic steps. I always like to outline the basic steps in the project uh -oh. so that when you first look at the project, you can get an idea of what you're going to be doing from the beginning to Coming the end. Back? I kind of started that a few months ago. That you know, was because... weird. Hmm. Are we still on? Where did we go? Can you all see me? Or hmm. did Joanne and I both disappear? I can see you, Angela. Can you hear me? Oh. That was the weirdest thing that's ever happened. I think I didn't even hear lightning outside. So unless that was on Joanne's end, can you all see me? You see and hear us both. Yes, you see both of us. Oh, goodness gracious. Here. Hey, Joanne, are you back? Yeah, I'm here. I have no idea what happened. I mean, I don't have any bad weather or anything. It was like all of a sudden the internet just went boom. Okay. So well, back. it looks like it looks like we're back because everybody's saying that we're both here. So <laughs> All right. I think we're good. <laughs> okay. We just wanted to make sure everyone was awake. Are you yeah, all exactly? <laughs> Are you listening? Are you watching? All right. So we'll, we'll continue on. So the formula again, that's all in the instructions, but like I said, very simple and you can see how I measured it. And then I, so you can go to the, yeah, right there. You can see um, I added uh, one inch for, for a little bit of ease um, for the length and two inches for a little bit of ease for, for the width. All right. Sounds so, then the next step there is just showing you um, your supplies. So you're going to need your brother machine and your four inch hoop, uh, some tearaway stabilizer. I love the brother. Um, I think it's S A. Oh, I don't remember the number right now, but it's the brother um, medium weight tearaway stabilizer. I use that more than I use anything else um, because it's, it's called medium weight, but I actually consider it a little bit on the lighter side. And so one layer very often is perfect. But if I need something a little beefier, I can use two layers of that. And it, it's just, it's absolutely perfect. 
Um, and then your basic sewing notions, uh, quilt quality cotton. Um, and if you think, if this is something that's going to be washed often, this is just another little tip for you. I know we have, you know, stitchers out there of all different levels, but uh, you tend to get what you pay for in fabric, right, Angela? The oh. good stuff just costs you a little bit more. It's just a fact of life. Yeah, you can get sales and sometimes there's clearances. Yeah. But when it comes to cotton, you know, if you want a project that's going to hold up well for the long term, especially something that's going to get a lot of wash and wear, go for the good stuff because it really does make a difference. And you'll see you don't need much fabric for this anyway, especially because the strap, which is the longest piece, is cut across the, the, uh, the you know, the cross grain from salvage to salvage. So that's mm -hmm. good. All right. Um, fusible craft fleece. We talked about that and the brother free design of the month. So um, just a little note here, um, there show, I show you all the different measurements. Like I said, I think you'd be good to go with using those and not having to figure any math. If you have a bottle, you can pretty much figure what size it is. Um, for the bottom strips, you're going to actually take the, the width measurement, um, subtract one inch and then divide it by two. Don't ask me how I came up with that, but I did and it worked. So just <laughs> <laughs> follow along and then you'll cut um three inch wide straps 44 inches long you're gonna love my method for doing the straps and the bottom strips i'm looking forward to seeing that uh just real quick though on that uh interfacing that you're not interfacing but uh stabilizer you're talking about uh is it patty wants to know is it soft or crispy and i could look up the number i think i have the bolt back here too so i can yeah, find that for you i would say it's it's um semi-crispy <laughs> it's not soft. It's not soft. Okay. It, you know, it feels papery when, when you touch it. Um, I, I, I'm telling you what, what I love about it is that most tearaways in, in my experience cannot be hooped with the fabric. You have to float it and floating is okay sometimes, but sometimes mm -hmm. you need that extra, um, stabilization with your fabric in the hoop. It helps your hoop clamp your fabric tighter. So the Brother medium weight tearaway is the only one that I use in the hoop together with the fabric because it's soft enough to, to you know, to be pliable enough to, to hoop in there, but not so stiff that it buckles. Because if you're using a tearaway that is crispy, really crispy, and you layer it with your fabric and you hoop it with your fabric, uh, mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, your, your fabric's going to move and your tearaway is not, and your design is not going to come out um, registered. If I had a dollar for every design I saw in all my years where somebody made that mistake, we could all go have a good lunch together. That's how many times I've seen it. <laughs> lunch on Joanne. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that next one just shows you the, the fleece is already attached and then it shows you the steps that I use to create that strap. And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. So um, let's see if there's any more. I don't remember what else I had. There is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful so colors. We're ready to go sew the rest. And I just, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I love looking at my spools of thread. <laughs> I love no, seeing I them love that. together. I don't love that at all, Joanne. <laughs> I, know, I know. Mine are over in the corner. I keep mine in a, you know, a little kind of a little, little indent part of my room, but um, I just love looking at those colored threads. And that just helps you again, kind of get, kind of get in the mood for stitching because you see all those colors waiting to be born into some beautiful brother <laughs> design. <laughs> so oh, we're going to, um, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to stitch the strips and the strap. I'm going to show you how I sewed the inside and the outside seam. We're going to then add those bottom strips and put the whole thing together. All right. We ready to switch over to the machine. Just give me a minute to reconfigure here. All right. Well, she's reconfigured. We can still hear you, Joanne, too. Yeah. Leave your comments and questions because we will definitely answer those. And we have left the links on Facebook and YouTube so you can get to the blog. But in case you're like, I don't want to have, I don't want to click right now, just go to brothersos.com, scroll to the bottom, and there's the sewing blog. There's the crafting blog, and you can go to either of those. And also, while Joanne's getting set up, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to Brother's YouTube channel because you'll always be notified when there's something new. And I'm trying to put the shows out a week or two early so you can save them and you know exactly who's going to be on if you have a favorite. All right, Joanne, I can see you if you're ready. 
Yep, I'm ready. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All Looks right. great. Okie dokie. Let me just get my um, straight stitch up here. Gotta oh, and thanks, Brother Social. As always, Brother's always on it. And they put a link in the Facebook side. I'll try to share it to the YouTube side for you for the medium weight tear away stabilizer. Excellent. Perfect. perfect, perfect, perfect. And you know right where to go to get it. Okay, so let's start with the um, the same process we use for all of the bottom um, strips, which actually I only need two. For some reason I have four. I think I, I think I was making those for samples and forgot I needed. I didn't need that many. We only need two of those, and then the same practice is used for the strap. So <clears throat> I have to tell you, a friend of mine, um, my friend uh, Andrea, showed me how to do this. She learned it from somebody else, and isn't that the wonderful thing about sewing? One, one person teaches another person a really cool trick, and eventually it probably spreads all over the whole world. But once I learn this trick, I do all of my straps like this. If I'm making any, any kind of um, you know, handle or strap, I just love this method. It's so, so simple. So you start out, you cut your, your strip, and again, I'm, I'm not going to do the math for you, but you'd have to figure um, what your finished width would be you might, you'd have to change up the, the sizes. But for me, I have a finished width of about an inch. So I cut an inch piece of fusible fleece and I fuse that to one edge. So if I were doing that for the big long strap, I'd do the whole, whole piece like that. The next step then is going to be your first fold. So your first fold is you fold over so that all of that fleece is hidden and you give it a good press. This is where you'd want to grab your Angela clapper and give it a good a good mash after you've ironed it so that you've got a nice crisp crisp edge there. The next step is you're going to take the raw edge opposite um, the one that you folded and you're going to fold it towards the other raw edge so that they meet. Okay just like that and you're going to give that a press and then your final fold is going to go just like that, where you're basically folding it to the center. Now you can fiddle with it just a little bit because you might not be perfect on your cutting or your folding, <clears throat> but you want that fold to be right in the middle there with just a little, little bit of a, a, of a lean to the, to the one edge. So I'll show you the one that's already pressed and I've actually got it pinned here. So if you're um, working with a longer strip, you probably want to pin it so that you've got it uh, all anchored as you're top stitching it. And then that's the next step. The next step is you're just going to simply top stitch right along that edge. Now I usually move my needle position to the center when I do that. And yes, you could use your laser if you wanted to, but we all know the lasers don't show up really good on camera. But if you have the, the guideline marker, you can do that. You can even set it so your guideline is um, on either outer edge to help you, you know, stay on the straight and narrow. But I'm looking at the little notch in the center of my foot and I'm lining it up with that fold line. And I want to have my needle just slightly to the left of there. And then I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way down. And I'm doing it from the, the wrong side because I want to make sure that I catch all of those edges. There you go. Perfect. Right down the center. Isn't it a beautiful stitch? Oh, does such perfect stitching. I'm actually stitching with embroidery thread. The polyester embroidery thread is strong enough to, to actually sew your seams. We usually, you know, use regular sewing thread, but I've got this threaded with my um, uh, embroidery thread. And you could also consider using a decorative stitch here, maybe something like the feather stitch. And in that case, you could sew right down the center from the top side and you would be sure that you would be catching both sides or even a zigzag. You know, I think a uh, ordinary zigzag stitch is a pretty cool looking stitch. So that's done. So all of my little strips are done and my big long strap is done. I will set those aside until I need them. All right. Then the next step is going to be to sew your, what, what ends up being your back seam. So I've already done that on both my lining piece and on my piece that actually has my embroidery. And just another tip for you, and I didn't put this in the instructions because again, I like to try to make the instructions as easy as possible. But 
Another little tip for you. Anytime you are um, creating a lining that's going to be, you know, basically the exact same size as your outer piece, consider making your seam just a little bit um, deeper. Um, so on, on this piece, I sewed a real true half inch seam. On my second piece, my lining piece, I nipped it in just a little bit. That makes this just a little bit smaller so that when you put one inside the other, you're not kind of, you know, forcing the two to be together. This one will end up just being slightly smaller. It's a trick that Angela, I'm sure you've done many times with uh, uh, pocketing and linings and things like that, but it's just, just another little extra tip for you. So I've got both of those sewed. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my lining piece and I've, and I've got the seams pressed. You definitely, again, want to press your seams, press them open, press them really flat. It's really important to have them um, really thoroughly pressed at both ends. So make sure you have them nice and nice and flat there. So I'm going to turn the lining right side out. Okay. And... I am now going to add my bottom strips. So my bottom strips are basically just crisscrossed. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to find the middle of this, find the middle of that, match those up pretty good. Okay. And I'm going to pin this. Hey, Joanne, Patty wants to know, uh, did you put fusible fleece on both pieces? Just yeah. Curious. Can you see that? Yep. And that I show you that in the instructions. Another reason I do that is because it makes it makes um, it makes it a little bit more insulated for one thing, and it just kind of it feels good and looks good. I guess that's the, that's the best reason I could come up with. It just kind of feels good and looks good to have both of those with that fusible fleece on there. Plus, don't forget this fleece is relatively thin. So by doing that, it just gives it a little bit more, a little bit more thickness, a little bit more padding. Okay. All right. So once we've done that, now we're going to, we're going to quarter mark the uh, bottom edge. And again, top bottom doesn't really matter on this because that sunshine looks good either way, but we're going to quarter mark this piece. I'm just going to do it with pins. So my back seam will be one piece. Okay. And then opposite that is my other uh, marking. So I've got halfway so far and I just match those two together. And now I got, I'll have four quarters here. Just like that. And of course I just dropped one on the floor, but I'll get that when I need it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just going to match up my straps, my little my little strips actually, with those quarter markings right in the center there. Super easy. Let me know if for some reason you can't see what I'm doing. I think you can. Okay. Just like that. So those are all tucked into the outside piece. And now we're going to baste these in place. And that's just going to help me in the next step when I need to put all the layers together. So now we're going to be sewing this with a half inch seam, but I'm going to actually run a line of basting a little bit below that. So just, just so that it's held firmly and flatly <laughs> right in place there. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch to the longest stitch length I have. And I am sewing on my brother Luminaire 3 today, but again, this is a four by four design and the sewing for this is all straight stitches. So you could do this on any brother. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to base that and I'm going to cut that thread. I could just baste all the way around, but that'll mean I have more bastings to take out. So I'm going to move on to the next one. And of course, I'm straddling a camera. So forgive me if I'm not perfect here. I'll try to keep this pretty straight. Okay, so I've got the next one basted. Two more to go. Again, like I said, this is just going to keep them where they need to be 
until I get that seam stitched. I like to say there's always a time and a place to baste. <laughs> Sometimes that means hand basting, but a lot of times it just means machine basting. Just so nothing's going to go anywhere. Oh, and I lost that one. So let me get that back into position. And you are, you know, you're, you're kind of maneuvering a little bit because you've got a, a little skinny circle there. But that's why, again, I, you know, I didn't, didn't say this in the beginning, but you'll see that I recommended that you don't choose to make this for a bottle under three inches in uh, diameter because this is just about the smallest circle I'd want to handle. And if you had a skinnier bottle, I would say just make a bigger bottle cover and uh, don't worry about it. Okay, so you can see I've got all of those basted there. Now I'm going to take this pin out. And when I take that pin out, it opens these up because the next step is going to be to sew my lining to my outer fabric. My lining fell on the floor, so let me grab it. And when we sew these two together, we don't have full access to that, to that tube that we've created. So we need to stuff this lining tube inside in between where those straps are. So I know this looks a little bit discombobulated, but hopefully you can see that and the instructions show that really well too. So we're gonna tuck that all the way in and we're sewing the bottom seam. So I wanna match my uh, back seams. These are back seams. You don't have a side seam. And I think I said, I, I think I started to say, but I'm not sure if I said the whole thing. Um, you can use pins or clips here, but at the beginning that the embroidery design is done right in the center of that front piece. So that makes it really easy for positioning. Just find the center of the, the um, height and width and uh, hoop it up so you're Design is in the center there and you're good to go. All right, so you can see how I'm having to like kind of just fiddle a little bit because those straps are are there kind of hanging out. I'm gonna straighten this out. Okay, but maybe another pin or two. And you know, I'm a pinning person. I do have clips. I do have clips. I probably could use a couple clips in here, but I'm just so used to working with pins that I, I forget about my clips a lot of time. You do want that to be nice and smooth all the way around. Okay, see how that, you know, how it wants to buckle up when you want to get a, get a pin in there and keep it smooth. Now, in a perfect world, my free arm would be small enough to slide this on and stitch it, but free arms are pretty much made for arms, not for little tiny cylinders like that. So I'm just going to go ahead. I, I love that, Joanne. In the perfect world, it would be. <laughs> and squeeze that under. Now, here's another tip, and I have this in the instructions. Um, I need to change my stitch length anyway because I was basting, but my normal standard straight stitch length would be two and a half. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go down to two. And why in the world would I want to do that? Well, Shorter stitch length makes it easier to maneuver curves. So I use this technique on garment sewing all the time. If I'm doing, um, you know, an intricate area that has curves, I'm going to shorten my stitch length to 2.0 because it allows you to maneuver a little bit better. Okay, so now we're just going to stitch that. And I'm going to go a little bit on the slow side because I don't have a lot of room uh, of an area that I can keep straight here. So there's going to come a time when I'm going to have to stop. Don't we all love needle down? How do we ever live without it? Well, we lived without it by hand cranking that wheel all the time. That's what we had to do. And then by the time, by the end of the day, we were sore and tired from cranking that hand wheel. No need to do that anymore. And you could also baste your um, little bottom strips right at a half inch as well if you want to make sure that they're not going to go uh, cockeyed <laughs> on you when you're doing this. Mine might go a little bit because I didn't take the time to do that. Trying to get this done for you. Never sew over pins. Always get those pins out of the way. 
and just keep smoothing that out a little bit at a time. Before you know it, you'll be at the end of the line and your circle will be stitched. You can also see that where my fleece was, because I made my fleece a half inch uh, smaller, that that gives me the perfect line to follow as a uh, stitching line, because that's right where I need to sew my seam. You're going to be amazed at how quick this goes together once you finish this part. Hey, Joanne, are you, you're sewing right next to the fleece, not on it, correct? Correct. Yep. Like I said, my fleece is cut a half inch a half inch smaller, both in width and in length. So that line right there becomes my, my stitching line because that's a half inch. Does that make sense? It sure does. All right. I'm going to back stitch a little bit here. Give it a cut. All right. Open this up. So now, if we opened it up, it would be... Oh, I missed one there. Okay, hang on. Hang on. While I fix this, maybe you can see if there's some interesting comments coming through. <laughs> I got I got a little little stitch glitch here. One of my little strips slipped out of the way. All right. I'm back up while she's slipping her stitches. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually in the back looking for fabric for this. And you're like, come on. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I'm way back here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, there are a couple questions. And I think Cindy Ball, great to see you, by the way. And uh, does the Luminaire have the program programmable dual foot? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The Luminaire 3 does. And I believe, I can't remember, but I think it came with the Luminaire upgrade as well. But ask your brother dealer. But yes, it does. I love that pedal. And it's kind of funny you mentioned about that for anybody who doesn't know what that is. Joanne, you just holler when you're ready. I'll bring you back up. It's the double foot where you can program the little foot to the right to do something and the back of the first. And I have to say, I teach some young girls how to sew on Tuesday afternoons. And everyone, including myself, we always end up pressing the little foot on the right, at which I have it set to cut. So you go to sew and it's like cut. Oh, no, you got to sew. But uh, it's so handy because while you're sewing, you can program it for, you know, different things so you can keep your hands on your fabric at all times. All right. What are the questions do you have? Why Joanne is. I, I can hear you so I can answer. I'm just. Flipping the stitches. Oh, Delia. Yeah, we're back on Thursdays at noon. Yes, we are. Noon on Tuesday, noon on Thursday for brother. Darlene loves your tips and tricks. You have a oh. lot of saying yes, they do. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I just don't think anybody needs to see me rip and struggle here. So, <laughs> Patty said, of course, this happened. It's live. The struggle only... is real. <laughs> <laughs> it just slipped out. You know what probably happened? My basting stitch probably just pulled out. Or, or you know what I think I did? I think I forgot to actually baste that one. I think that's what happened. Uh, Susie, what kind of fabric? Well, Joanne said she's using a, a quilted cotton. Um, I was actually in the back here. I have some fleece. I think this would look really cool out of, you mentioned the fleece lining, but I have a ton of fleece that would be really cute to just throw this on the back of my bag. So, um, oh, yeah, I'll why not? Why not? You know, anything goes, anything goes. And the other one I was just thinking about, because I'm going on a fishing trip. I was thinking, what about using a towel on the outside, like using towel fabric? I've been oh, cutting up. I love that idea. That would be cute. Okay, so everyone watching, leave a comment if you're going to make this. Oh, Caroline Booth, which you know her well, Joanne. She yes. said she needs to make these for Christmas gifts. Good idea, yeah. Caroline. Absolutely. Then you're ahead of the game. And, yeah. you know, you got, oh, wouldn't it be fun to do gifts like that where you made like something for, for you know, like, both seasons or every season so that yeah. you know, whoever you were giving it to had something to look forward to, to using it in the, <laughs> in the future. Oh, by the way, I see brother social on here. We're laughing about Christmas in July because that's kind of when we talk about that. But those of you that watch the brother shows Tuesday is on the brother crafting side and May's going to be on there giving you some really good ideas for Christmas in July on making cards and tags. So it'll tie in perfectly with what we're doing right now. Oh, that's great. Okay, I did realize my mistake. I forgot to, and probably if you look back at the video, you could you would maybe count that I only basted three things instead of four. 
So that's what happened. Uh, that's all, all right. right. All right. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stitch you. this. You go ahead and keep talking for just a minute. So that I make all sure right. I got Watch it in the right place. Uh, Patty, can you, can't you put the secondary foot on either side? Yes, you can. I'm just in the habit of putting it on the right side, but I think I'm going to move it to the left side because your foot, my foot, I'm right-handed automatically goes to that right-hand side. So that's a good idea, Patty, because you can, you can put that dual foot on either side, either side. Joy said the same thing. She puts hers. So uh, Joanne, do you use the dual foot? Absolutely. I love it. I love it. it I'm using right it right now. The right or left? Um, you know, I change it all the time. Um, but but I always have my you know my normal push power going on the front the front toe, and then um, I usually have one set for reverse and one set for cutting. But but I do switch it up depending Ooh. on the project that I'm making. I That's love fun. love love my dual function foot control. I don't know how I ever sewed without it. But I think it does take a little getting used to. So it's one of those things where you have to force yourself initially if you haven't used it um, to start using it. And then you will never go back. Trust me. I agree. Oh, Joanne, I got to share this with you because it's pretty darn funny. Uh, you said you might have forgotten to base that fourth one in. Cindy uh, Ball says, Joanne, you said you were never good at math. So you got an out. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for the excuse. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, I am back in business here. So, all right, back to you, Joanne. I'm over and out. I'm going all to right. look for fabric. <laughs> this is the this is the tangled mess, but it's all okay because these are all anchored in place. And once you've got that anchored, um, like I said, you're gonna pull it pull it out so it's one big long tube. And then you're going to go ahead and tuck the lining into the outer piece. Get that all pulled up. And again, this is where I oh, would take the time. I just lost Joanne. I came back. Sorry, guys. I left to go look at fabric and left Joanne off. <laughs> How oh, do you like that? Am I back? You're back. Okay. So you can see how that bottom looks with the, the crisscrossed straps. The lining is tucked inside. We only need we only have one more thing to do. We need to take our strap, our big long 44, 45, 44, 45, 42 inches, whatever it is, and we're gonna tuck it in so that it's at the two sides. So again, I'm just gonna find my kind of quarter marking on here by putting those back seams together because you do want it on the side. So that would be my front. And then when I refold it, these two spots are going to be my sides. And you would take this to your um, iron and you would press under a half inch on the outside piece and then a half inch on the inside piece. I uh, press the one, but I couldn't press the other because I left it flat for you. You're just going to slip that strap in there about about a half inch. I'll transfer that pin right there. Flip it over. Make sure that you don't twist your strap as you're getting it back into that other side. Double check yourself. Ask me how I know. And that is a common mistake to make. That pinned. And I'm just going to finger press this as I go. And again, I'm going to need to squeeze it underneath here. Get that all under the presser foot. And like I said, you'd have this all pressed, but you see your pressed edges are going to meet at the top. You're going to sandwich your um, shoulder strap in between there. And I think we have time to stitch this whole seam. I won't worry about being too neat there. In fact, I'm going to lengthen my stitch because you know what? I will readily admit that probably afterwards I'm going to want to take this out and make that part perfect. So we'll just do it for a quickie today. So again, you're going to sew a 
short distance at a time. Now, again, if you're using a, a 2.0 stitch length, that just makes it a little bit easier to maneuver around the curves. I'm using a little longer right now so that I can tweak it later. But that also gives you a stronger seam. Now, I'm going to sew just a single stitch over those straps, but I would recommend if you think you're, you know, you've got, um, you know, this is going to hand, be handled roughly, then you'd want to go back and give that another, another reinforcement. This would be a perfect time to use your, uh, your sideways motion on your machine. And, uh, you know, brother has that great, great feature where you can sew up, down and side to side, and you could reinforce the spots where your strap is attached. This just starts to get so exciting when it's almost done. All right, I'm gonna come back over to the other camera and show you the final result. All right, and I found fabric. Joanne, I was on a mission that, uh, and I, I'm laughing at all your comments, like uh, Julie says, I was enjoying watching Angela wonder. Yeah, I was trying to debate what fabric to get. So I'm making a skirt out of this Ponty knit this afternoon in Fashion Sewing Club. We're making a really fun, trendy skirt, and I'm going to make a coordinating bag. I love the bag, Joanne. I love it. I love it. Oh, fun. Well, really, yes. these, are, these are so fast and easy that you could make a bunch of them. And make a oh. bunch of different colors. So let me get my bottle out of the other one. To match your outfit. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I think I like that insulated fleece idea as well. And I have some. So That's cool. So Isn't cool. it so cool? Let me bring it. Ooh, wrong way. So there you go. Cute. Everybody's saying they love it. Patty says, I want to do decorative stitches. Oh, oh, it was a, it was a, a lot of fun um, creating an original pattern for this, because like I said, after seeing mm -hmm. so many out there um, and wanting it to be, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and a little bit of that. But bottom line, you know, the, the, the real feature here is that beautiful free brother design from embroidery and, uh, you know, you're good to go. You so, could check these, too, if you wanted to download your pattern right that pattern right now the design yes and i love your idea there's a lot of people in here saying that they have the luminaire well now you know to put it in the color shuffle joanne i think it's gonna when you have all those different colors it matches that blue so nicely yeah. you actually matched today i had fun with that i know <laughs> keep going in the wrong direction here um and again you could see that i minimized so i used lime green here and and there and then I repeated the the yellow um, and repeated that blue. So I didn't have to. I love it. So what, what colors do you think I should use for this? Like cream, oh. white. I would use, I would probably use white. White would pop yellow because I'm seeing your yellow, your beautiful yellow top and behind you. And that oh, looks, yes, I can finish that. That would look yeah, good. Yeah, that would look really good with that. Yellow would be great. Okay. Um, you could use um, black. You could use uh, black. It actually has a little bit of black on it. That that makes it pop too. Kind of outlines it. Um, Good idea. Lime green. I you could use neon colors if you wanted to. I like that, and I think it'll look good with the yellow too. That's going to be the outfit. So now I'm going to have a matching water bottle holder just because of you, or wine bottle. Someone said that's a good idea too. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Hey, do you want it? Well, we have just a um, a couple minutes. Do you want to pull up the the blog post with the the foot of the month and I'll go grab the project. Absolutely. For what's right. next. I'll be right back. All right. See you in a sec. So, oh yes, Patty, color shuffle is on the still air. I just always think of the luminaire. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Susie, turquoise would look really good on that. Black and creams and red. Okay, Joanne, I'm sorry. I got squirrels. Let okay. me, uh... <laughs> I can't wait to read all the comments because I can't follow all of them while we're on here, but I do go back I... and Oh, and read them. And if you have know. any questions, let's go sew.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. You can find me there, and I'm always happy to help. So don't I'm hesitate just, to reach out. I'm going to bring up um, first of all, everyone wanted to know what the stabilizer you were using, and I have that right here. Okay, good. On this open tab. So let's bring this up. 
brother shared this. It's SA5810. And the, I will drop in right into the comments. Uh, Cheryl wants to know, or Sherry, I said, is it Sherry or Cheryl? Sorry, Sherry. I need stronger glasses. <laughs> um, I'm going to put the stabilize in here, but what foot did you use, Joanne, uh, on that last one? Just a uh, regular standard J foot, regular sewing, straight stitch and zigzag foot, nothing special. Oh, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. I miss the eye. Don't take it personally. All right. So here's the stabilizer. I'm dropping it in the comments on Facebook yeah. and YouTube because I think social team was just on Facebook. So uh, for all of our YouTube friends that are following, you can click on that link for the stabilizer. And now let's bring up the blog, which I believe is right here. Oh, I forgot. I have to go to a different tab. Hold tight. I got a kick out of Barbara Jones. She says um, she has a lovely bottle of hydration in the refrigerator. It might inspire some great late afternoon sewing. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more to that story than she's telling us. <laughs> I like that, Barbara. Okay, so here's the free design of the month for here that you I, we just gave you the link for, just so you know. Yep. Uh, this And I will drop this into the comments as well. Right. And if you could... If you're watching the replay, you'll see Brother has posted this already, but here's the free design of the month. Well, it's for this month, by the way. July of 2023. I can't believe it's July. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I did for, for next month. Um, because I always like to give you a little a little tease. Wow, I've already forgotten what I what I did. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is but you have great pictures on here so for those of you that said you know what i can't quite see those straps or joanne in case you missed all four it's okay they love it when it's live uh yeah there, all the pictures are here she always has great instructions and then what you can do is replay this video after you to coordinate with the blog which is perfect and again, right. like I said if you ever have any other questions if something's not clear you know we don't have comments active on the actual brother blog anymore because there's issues with spam and that type of thing but if you ever have any questions please just reach out to me at let's go sew.com and I'm, I'm happy to help you I, I i want you to i want you to enjoy your brother machine and all the accessories to the fullest like i do <laughs> <laughs> all right here's the um it's a different screen so sorry about that is it a is it a wedding guest book? Is that what it is? Yes. Yep. Oh, there it is. is that? So and and again, just like everything, the the idea can be used for many different things. I made this one just because I I you know we're we're using the Spanish hem stitching attachment. I don't have all the pieces and parts here, but what it is a like? brand new attachment from Brother. It allows you to do stitching in an open space between two fabrics. So you can use your hem stitches. Um, you can do a whole lot of things with this. Oh, thanks for bringing up the picture. So it comes in uh, with uh, three pieces. You have a clear view open toe foot, which you use so that you can match everything up really good while you're going along. You can use that foot for other things too. It's great for applique and some decorative stitching. And then you have two bobbin case covers, depending on your brother machine, um, you know, according to the, the, the specifications for the machines that that works with, one of those will fit. The other one will just be an extra unless you have another brother machine that has a different type of uh, bobbin case cover. But that is what gives you the ability to use, the, again, those beautiful hem stitches and leave an open space between two pieces of fabric, two pieces of ribbon, uh, two pieces of leather, two pieces of whatever you can come up with where you want to leave a space. I wanted to kind of give it kind of a, you know, fancy schmancy look. So I did it for a wedding guest book. I just, I think this is the coolest idea because you get a, a big, nice blank book with all blank pages and your guests can um, write all of their advice to you. And, you know, you could even use this at a shower, but it's nice to have, uh, at a, at a, you could use it for a baby shower. You can use it for anniversary, um, you know, celebrations, all, birthdays, anything you want where you want people to, you know, leave a memory and have a, a really nice personalized message, message in there. So I got a okay. nice big book and blank pages. Joanne, and 
I have to just ask. I mean, because I, my mind is immediately going to garments. I made a tank top years ago where I had two separating pieces for the collar and I hand stitched all of those. So I can just go do that by machine, which Ooh. would be so much faster. Yes. And it was just wow. piecing together layers of a collar. Oh, yeah. This, and, this. and, you know, heirloom sewing. Um, and the, and the, the book cover instructions are really fun to have, too. They're, they're, it's simple. It's not, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, space science or anything like that. But when I finished this one, the same day I was going to a graduation party, I thought, you know, I, I bet my, my great niece would love to have a blank book that she could take around to her friends and have them sign at the party. So real quick, I just did a, a you know, a plain one out of pretty fabric, embroidered her, her um, name on the front. I embroidered a little message on the back flap. I'll go ahead and open this up because I just made this so that it would be pretty and tied with a bow. But I embroidered a message on the back flap to her and you could do it, you know, on the front. You could personalize it however you want. But again, it's just a nice, nice, neat book cover. You can make it out of plain fabric if you wanted to and just, uh, you know, have it cover in your, your favorite book. But the hem stitching attachment just gives you that beautiful, beautiful blank space that I chose to then take a uh, nice glittery ribbon and I wove it underneath the stitches to fill back in that space, but you can leave it open if you want to. Just a fun one. And so Joanne, this foot is now available on, they could find this, call your brother dealer. Yep. SA220, SA220, Spanish Hemstitch Attachment. I have to confess, I've never used this before and yeah. it's absolutely going on my must have list because I love the look of that attaching sleeves, uh, something on a jacket. Oh my goodness gracious. And I love the book idea. And I think this is the newest accessory available. So, you know, uh, if your dealer doesn't have it yet, they may not be aware of it either. Make sure you call them up and let them know and get, get those on order. Awesome. And I put the link to this into the comments, but if you miss the link because the comments are scrolling so fast, all you have to do is go to brothersews.com, scroll to the bottom and click on the brother blog. They're sewing and crafting too. Excellent. Awesome. Something for everybody every every month, right? Every something month on the Brother Stitching everybody. Social site, something for everyone. I love it. And we have videos to go with it, which is even better because you can go back and watch this replay. I saw some of you join in late. So I uh Sherry, you joined late and you might have missed the part that Tuesday is Christmas in July with May. You mentioned your scan and cut. That's what she teaches you how to make the cards with. And you're not going to want to miss it because it's really, really, really super cute. Super cute. Joanne, great project. You'll have to go back. There's a lot of fantastic comments. And again, yeah. sorry that we lost each other for a second. And sorry that I left you all hanging while I was so excited about fabric. I ran off. <laughs> All's well that ends well. And I just want to tell you how how much it means to me. I, I always enjoy spending time with you, Angela. That's without a doubt. Um, so we, fun. We're, we're near but not far in many ways <laughs> but um having everybody here is just it's like having a sewing party and i love seeing everybody and reading all your comments and um we yeah. just really appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these shows thank you absolutely. brother for letting us take over the page right absolutely thanks for letting us take over by the way last question before we run Jeannie wants to know Jenny wants to know uh, will this footwork on any machine or does it say like specific machines that it only works with? Do you know by any chance? Ginny, I, I don't know for sure. The best um, way to find out is to go to the um, brother-usa.com um, <coughs> site and you'll see a list of what works or go to your brother dealer and, you know, actually try the accessory to see because it's, I think it's going to work on, on most, 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 most. But we know that there are a lot of, you know, a lot of variables in the machines and I don't get to see all of them. So that's my best advice for you. Yeah, and also I'm just looking at the foot plate that goes in. It looks like there's two different shapes. So yeah. you're definitely gonna need to check if your machine will work because you never what, it, what it's doing, I'll just pop mine off real quick, is it's matching your bobbin case cover. Okay, bobbin case covers have a little variation in in the, the notching system. And so you need one that um, that matches your, your oh, that looks weird. <laughs> you need one that matches your machine. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. And that's 
that was a great question because you just never know. And it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Joanne, this was an awesome project. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to share your projects because brother loves to see what you're working on. Uh, absolutely loves it. So use hashtag brother sews, hashtag brother scan and cut. I'm just bringing up, I had you right here. Where did you go, Joanne? I had your website. If everyone wants to find Joanne, here you go. Let's go. Let's go, 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 go. Dot com. You can find brother at brothersos.com, myself at angelawolf.com. We love to see what you're working on and be sure to thank brother for bringing us back on Thursdays. This was great. All right. Happy sewing. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.